Today we're talking all about adulting. When it comes to growing up, there's so many responsibilities, jobs, bills, taxes, commitment, and we can either be like Peter Pan and push it off as long as possible, or we can learn to embrace it and find a whole lot of joy in the process. So how do we do that? Well, we're talking about it today. Welcome to Epic Everywhere, practical teaching to help you grow in your faith no matter where you are on your spiritual journey. My name is Emily and I'm the pastor of Epic Online and a special shout out to everyone who's joining us for the first time today. Welcome. Hey, as we kick things off, we're going to go ahead and take a step towards connection together. You know, as your pastor, I want to equip you to grow relationally and spiritually, but I can't do that if I don't know you're here. So let's go ahead and change that today. Every time you're hanging out with us, take time to text in. To text in today, you can text HERE to 215-999-8575, or you can scan the QR code. And then that's gonna give you access to our Next Steps Hub, which has content that's gonna be super helpful for you. You'll see a spot where you can let us know how we can be praying for you and some info on things that are coming up here at Epic. One of the things that we have coming up is our guys night going down on June 1st for anyone in the Philly area. You know, we think it's really important for guys to know one another in our church and have Christian community. For whatever reason, it can be hard for adults to make friends and research tells us that it's especially tough for men to make friends. So we wanna help. So we've created an opportunity on June 1st where we can build friendships, have some fun and eat some good food. So go ahead and click that link in the hub for more details details and to get signed up. Well, a few weeks ago, we had a team celebration where we gathered everyone who's a part of serving on teams across our church and right here at Epic Online to really celebrate what God is doing through them. So we wanted to show you a little highlight of what went down that night. Our theme was a late night show and man, did we have a blast. Take a look. fun. I'm so grateful to all of you who serve and all of you who give. You're really a part of this thing and you're part of the many lives that God is changing. You know, there's a lot of things that we can invest our time and money in, but here's one thing that I love about investing and in sharing the message of Jesus. It never gets old. Its impact never fades. It never wears out. You know, when you give, you can literally see the return on investment as people come to church, meet Jesus, start serving and growing in their faith. So again, thank you so much for your generosity and for being a part of that. To give today, you can do so on the hub or by heading to epic.church slash give. Let's continue to be that kind of church that invests in things that last. Well, the time has come for today's message, so let's get to it. Well, hey everyone, my name is Paul and I'm one of the teaching pastors here at Epic. Now, when I was a kid, one of my favorite characters and stories was Peter Pan. Now, Peter Pan, 
you know, lived in Neverland. He was always flying around and fighting pirates like Captain Hook and having adventures with the Lost Boys. And the main thing about Peter Pan was that he didn't want to grow up. Uh, as long as he stayed in Neverland, he would stay the same age. He could have adventures forever and would never have to do that dreaded thing growing up. And I loved the Peter Pan stories, and I, I'm not the only one. So since the original play was written by J.M. Barry in 1904, there have been over a hundred works based on the story of Peter Pan, including movies, uh, series, like TV series, books, video games. I think there's just something in the Peter Pan stories that has resonated with so many people now across multiple generations. It, it's that feeling of wanting to hold on to your childhood, of wanting to hold on to your youth, and wanting to put off all of the difficult things that come with adulthood. So just listen to the words that Peter Pan sings in the adapted Broadway musical. I won't grow up, I don't want to wear a tie, and a serious expression in the middle of July. And if it means I must prepare to shoulder burdens with a worried air, I'll never grow up, never grow up, never grow up. Anyone who wants to try and make me turn into a man, catch me if you can, I won't grow up. Not a penny will I pinch. I will never grow a mustache. Which, you know, it's impossible for me to basically grow facial hair, so I nailed that part. So, I will never grow a mustache or a fraction of an inch, because growing up is awfuler than all the awful things that ever were. I'll never grow up, never grow up, never grow up. No, sir, not I, not me, so there. Yeah, eat that, adulthood, right? Growing up is so lame. You have to work and pay bills and there are responsibilities, right? And it's scary because there's so much on your shoulders and so much that can go wrong and there's just so much you're responsible for. Wouldn't it be just so much nicer to not have to grow up? Wouldn't it be so nice? So today, we're going to dive into that tension a little bit. The, the tension between not wanting to grow up and not wanting the responsibility that comes with it, but also needing to, right? We need to. We can't escape it. So we're in this series, TBD, and we're looking at the different stages of life and the major questions that come with each one. And today, we're talking about becoming an adult, and these questions in particular, what am I going to do my, with my life and who am I going to do it with? And I think especially for this question, what am I going to do with my life? Uh, I, I think a lot of us really just want a specific answer to it, right? Like, it, it would be so nice for someone to just tell me, like, what school I should go to or, or what career I should pursue or, or whether I should leave this job for that one, or someone please just tell me if I should stay here in Philadelphia, or if I should move back home closer to my family, or just buy a plot of land in Montana somewhere where nobody is around. It's the third option. The third option is the right one. So if you haven't learned this yet, you might as well begin to learn this now. We rarely get easy answers to questions like that. And not that it can't happen. So I've had a few moments in my life where I felt like God was clearly saying to me, do this or don't do this. But those moments, I think, are more the exception rather than the rule. So the answer to the question, what am I going to do with my life, isn't really that easy or simple because it's an adult question. It's a grown-up question. And being an adult often means that we have to navigate complexities in gray areas. So maybe another question that could help us to answer a complex question like that, uh, like what do I do with my life, could be this. How do I become or even be an adult? How do I become an adult? How, how do I do that? Like, how do I become an adult who can com navigate complex situations? Like, and it might be something that you're wondering you know, as you're turning 18, it might be something you're wondering when you're 21 or 25. It's something that I still wonder at times, and I'm 72 years old. I just age really well. Or you might also be wondering, much like Peter Pan, do I have to do this? Like, do I, do I have to grow up? Like, what if I don't want to? Like, grown-ups say things like, are you working hard or hardly working? This sounds horrible. Who wants to be that? Who wants to turn into that? It's the funny thing that we do 
as humans. We spend so much time as kids wishing that we were older, like wishing we could have the freedom and the power of an adult. And then we turn 18 or 21 or 25 or 30 or 40, and then life is hard, and we spend so much time wishing we could be younger and having less to worry about. So, so what if one of the keys to figuring out like what to do with my life and how to be an adult is simply to start here, learning to embrace the stage of life I'm in rather than trying to escape it. Learning to embrace the stage of life I'm in rather than trying to avoid it. Uh, I have a hard time believing that God envisions a life for us where we spend all of our time just wishing we were somewhere else instead of where we are. But that's what we do. Like we spend so much time trying not to be where we are. We spend so much time trying to resist the stage of life that we're in. We're, we're desperately wishing that we could either be somewhere in the future or, or especially as adults, we're desperately trying to turn back the clock. Like we spend so much time and energy and even money to fight the appearance of aging or, or to resist the things that are being asked of us in this stage of life. But so much of scripture is about learning to embrace right now, right where we are, not looking back too much, but give us this day our daily bread. If this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. So what if we learn to like lean in and embrace what adulthood brings instead of being afraid of it, instead of resisting it so much? So today we're going to look at what we can learn from scripture. And as we do so, we'll hopefully be able to offer you some guidance on how to lean into what it means to be an adult. So when we do look at scripture, we're going to find that the apostle Paul has at least a few things to say about it. And we find one of those things in particular in his first letter to the Corinthians. Paul writes, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. And so I can just picture the apostle Paul like sitting Peter Pan down and saying this, when I was a child, okay, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. And Peter Pan's like, nothing wrong with that. Keep going. Love everything I've heard so far. And then Paul says, and then it was time to grow up. And I left those childish ways behind me. And Peter Pan's like, typical adult thing to say. So lame. So lame. But Paul's pretty clear here. At some point, it's time to be a grown up person and put our childish ways behind us, put the ways of childhood behind us. It's, it's so simple, right? Like, so, you know, if you're 18 or you're 20, whatever, hey, look, your childhood has expired, okay? So take it out back and send it to the farm in the sky. And, and if that was that, right, it would be simple enough, but it's never quite that simple for adults. And if we look at elsewhere in scripture, we get seemingly a different message. And this one comes from Jesus himself. In the book of Matthew, we find this story. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And the question is funny if you think about it, because, you know, the disciples are young people, they're young adults. So, you know, Jesus was around 30 at this time. And what we know of the disciples age range is that they were like teenagers to possibly up to 30 years old. So somewhere in there, like teenagers and young adults. And this question that they pose to Jesus, like, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven is very much the kind of question that we would ask in that age range, which is basically to say, I'm kind of hoping the answer is me, right? The disciples, they're all hoping for promotions. They want to know that Jesus thinks that they're going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus, because he's God and God is love, says, oh, precious ones, you are the greatest. You are. And I'm so very proud of you. And everything that you do is the best and my favorite. And here's a trophy that says you're the greatest. No, Jesus doesn't do that. Here's how he responds, actually. He called a little child to him, placed the child among them and said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never 
enter the kingdom of heaven. And which, I, could you imagine this happening today? Like someone comes to you and asks a question like, uh, who's the best person you know? And, and like, you know, they're coming to you looking for affirmation and to answer their question, like you point to someone else and you're like, they are, they are, be like them. <laughs> Now listen, Jesus is loving and compassionate and kind and caring, but sometimes he's a savage too. So we seemingly have a problem here. The apostle Paul says, leave the ways of childhood behind. But here Jesus is saying, unless you become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So which one is it? Are we all supposed to grow up? Or oh, was Peter Pan right? And we're not supposed to grow up after all. What if Peter Pan and the Lost Boys are actually Jesus and the disciples? That's not correct either. Let's take a deeper look. Jesus doesn't stop there. He continues to explain, Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes such a child in my name welcomes me. And more accurately, the phrase lowly position here uh, would mean to humble yourself, to humble yourself like a child. And what it means to humble yourself like a child is to recognize one's need for help. And so this interesting thing happens as we become adults. We become more independent and we separate from our parents in many ways, right? We move out on our own. We become financially independent. We, we do more things for ourselves. And this is good. This is a good thing. But as Jesus points out, at the same time, spiritually, we need to recognize our continual dependence on something, someone greater than ourselves. So part of the key to adulthood is being able to grow up in some ways and then not grow up in other ways. So clear as butt. So to help clarify, hey, I'm going to word it like this today. There's a difference between childlike and childish. Now, hopefully this distinction can help. So we want to remain childlike in many ways. And we want to become less childish. So we want to be childlike in the ways that Jesus teaches. We want to remain humble. We want to recognize our need for God. We want to retain a sense of childlike wonder and innocence. But... As the Apostle Paul teaches us, we want to leave behind childish ways so that we can grow into the adults that God is calling us to be. So really quick, childlike is good. Uh, we need that and we need to retain some of that childlikeness in our lives. So this is like that sense of wonder. This is the sense of curiosity. This is the sense of fun, uh, the, 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 the need to like explore and have adventures. Like I will say that there are some of us here too, who because of our family that we were, that we were growing up with, we were forced out of childhood and into adulthood way too soon. And so for those of you that that applies to, like it's, it's actually necessary to get back in touch with your childlike qualities, right? That sense of wonder, these good things. But most of us, I would suspect, have much more of a need to leave behind some of the childish ways that, that we've kind of been holding on to. So to that end, we're gonna break down one of the most helpful specific things that we can do to leave childish ways behind and to embrace uh, what I'll call adultish ways. So here it is. The childish way is to avoid responsibility. The adultish way is to embrace responsibility. So responsibility is that thing that Peter Pan was so afraid of. And I think for a lot of us, responsibility is basically like a dirty word. Like some of us have been training to be professional responsibility avoiders since we've been like two, right? We've been avoiding cleaning our toys, cleaning our room, cleaning pretty much anything. And so it makes sense that we just keep trying to avoid the responsibilities of adulthood, especially because that list keeps growing when we become adults. But I'm reminded of this famous line from Spider-Man. And Marvel fans, you know what Uncle Ben says to Peter Parker. He says, with great power comes great responsibility. And you know what? Uh, I'm not going to limit this line to just great power because, you know, after all, uh, not many of us are going to be bitten by a radioactive spider and have to deal with superpowers. 
like a, like a few of us are, but but not everybody. So I thought I'd extend this to include with great freedom comes great responsibility. And it's funny, you know, the one thing that we want when we're younger is like more freedom, you know, more independence. I remember being that way when I was a kid. I hated rules, right? I had I hate having rules put on me. I hated having to meet curfew or having a bedtime. I wanted to go where I wanted, when I wanted. I wanted to be able to do what I wanted to do. And, and now that I, I'm a teacher and I teach seventh grade students, I see this with them all the time. Like my students want more freedom. They want more independence. They want to be able to do what they want to do. And so one of the things that I try to repeatedly teach to my students is this, like you want your parents to give you more freedom, but do you know what your parents are waiting for you to do? They're waiting for you to show them more responsibility. And it's this weird thing, like the twist is that the path to freedom requires and involves more responsibility. Like, and we think, and this is a childish way of thinking, that with great freedom, there should be less responsibility. But the reality is that the way that all of this works is that great freedom is accompanied by more responsibility. You know, Memorial Day is coming up here soon, and it's this great reminder for us that there have been a long line of men and women who have sacrificed their lives. They have taken on the greatest responsibility so that we could have freedom. And scripture teaches us that we were called to freedom, that it is for freedom we've been set free. But how have we been set free? We've been set free by the sacrifice that Jesus made for each and every single one of us. So, Freedom or true freedom isn't simply doing whatever I want. True freedom comes from embracing responsibility because it teaches us about the balance of life that anything worth having requires sacrifice. Anything worth having requires sacrifice. So to that point, I would add this, with great love comes great responsibility. So with great freedom comes great responsibility and with great love comes great responsibility. You can't have great love and zero responsibility. It doesn't work like that. Like try to love someone deeply, but also be very irresponsible with them. It doesn't work. To love someone or something means that we are responsible with and to them. So when the Apostle Paul writes, when I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me, there's context to that statement. So when he says that he put the ways of childhood behind him, he was speaking specifically about love. And in fact, in this passage where he writes this, this is the famous passage that almost everyone has heard of at some point. So Paul says, right, I stopped thinking and speaking and reasoning like a child and I became a grown-up man. And this is what he was talking about. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. So if you ask me, like, how could I stop being childish and become more adultish? And I could only point you to one place. I would point you to this passage to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. Being an adult, being a grown-up, embracing responsibility looks like this. It looks like being more patient and kind. It means that You don't envy, you don't boast, you're not proud, but rather you're humble. You don't dishonor others, you're not self-seeking, you're not easily angered. You don't keep a record of the ways that you've been wronged by anybody. You don't delight in or celebrate evil when it is done. You value the truth. You do everything you can to protect those in your life. You do everything you can to hope even when it's dismal. You do everything you can to persevere even when the complexities and burdens and responsibilities of adulthood feel heavy. The great irony is that by 
continuing to fear responsibility and, and avoiding responsibility, you miss out on the very things that you want the most. Freedom and love. So one of the first and best things that you can do to become an adult and to do adulthood well is to embrace the responsibility that God is calling you to in this current stage of life, even if and even when you fear it. So uh, many of you know this, but you know, I lost my dad a, a few years ago and, and a few, you know, my, he, he, so he was battling cancer and in, in the months leading up to his death and in the time that has followed since then, I, I was faced for the first time in my life uh, with the responsibility of having to take care of both of my parents, which, you know, is a strange role reversal. And, and I, I think that I was a, like a lot of adults in that I've never really felt like a real adult. Do you know what I mean? Like I had a job, I, I paid my taxes. Like, you know, when someone has offered to go out on a Friday night, I've turned them down because all I want to do is sit on my couch and do absolutely nothing. So, you know, this is a very grown up thing to do. But I always had this feeling like I, I was just playing the part. You know, like, like deep inside, I'm just like a 13 year old kid, but now I'm allowed to rent cars by myself. But walking with my dad in his final months and preparing for his death and, and suddenly being in charge of all of his accounts and having power of attorney, which is a grown-up word I had to learn, and then having to guide my mom through everything after my dad died, it just felt like this massive responsibility. And it's one that, like, obviously, I would never want or ask or sign up for voluntarily. And, and, you know, a lot of times that's what adulthood is like. It's having to face responsibilities that we would never volunteer for ourselves. But it's weird, though. Um, you know, it, it's obviously there, there's sad parts to this, but I don't look back on that stage of my life as just purely bad and purely sad. In many ways, I'm actually grateful. Um, it prepared me. It prepared me. It has actually given me more confidence to handle what comes next. Does that make sense? It's given me more confidence to handle what comes next. And, and this is kind of what happens. Like embracing your responsibility gives you the confidence and the strength that you need to face the next thing that life has in store. It, it gives new meaning to, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because facing and embracing your responsibilities gives you the opportunity to see God at work in your life. It's what he uses to build you up. And so the more that you avoid your responsibilities, the more you miss God strengthening you, preparing you, delivering you, and you miss him leading you to something better. So you know what's interesting about responsibility is that facing and embracing responsibility, it's a lot like a muscle. So facing and embracing your responsibility makes that muscle grow and in turn, it prepares you, right? It makes you stronger and more confident and more capable of handling the next thing. And it's like a muscle as well in that you use it or you lose it. And so the more that we avoid responsibility, the more that muscle is going to atrophy and shrink and the less prepared that we're going to be for what life has for us. And that means that we're going to be less prepared to handle the big, difficult things that come our way. But we're also, think about this, we're also going to be less prepared for the big, amazing things that life has in store for us. Because everything that's worth having requires sacrifice. And there's so many of us, right? We want good things in our life, but we keep opting out of the practice that we need to be ready for them. Like you keep wanting a better job, but sometimes we're opting out of the current responsibilities that are in front of us that would prepare us for that better job. Like we are wanting the perfect person to come along, but because we're avoiding responsibility, we're not getting the preparation that we need to be ready for that person to come along. So let's face 
and embrace our responsibilities. Let's let that muscle grow, right? So if you're a college student, embrace the responsibility of this stage of life. Like study, do your work, show up to your classes. If your family isn't helping you financially, get a job. And I know that none of that is easy, right? But if you do what's required of you now, it grows your muscles so that you're prepared for what comes later. If you're just starting out in your career, right, you should know how this goes. You get all the grunt work that nobody else wants to do. You end up having to put in more hours than maybe somebody else who's been there for 20 years. But every single person who has had meaningful success has started where you are doing what you're doing. So embrace the responsibility that you have in front of you so that you can grow the muscles that you need to prepare you for what's next. If you're a parent, woo, you have a massive and ever-changing list of responsibilities in front of you. Embrace what is required of you in this stage of life. And you already know what's at stake. I think every single one of us, we have either experienced parents or a parent who has embraced the responsibility that was in front of them, or they've shirked and avoided the responsibility that was in front of them, and you know the effect that that's had on you. So embrace your responsibility, grow your muscle so you can be prepared for what comes next. Whatever responsibility you're facing in this stage of life, embracing it will grow your muscle and prepare you for what's next, both the tough things and the best things. So if you're trying to figure out, what am I gonna do with my life? You can start by embracing where you are and embracing the responsibility that comes with it. In doing so, you're gonna prepare yourself for whatever comes next. And sometimes that's the best any of us can do. And if you're wondering, who am I gonna do life with? I'll tell you this, you want to do life with wise people who also value embracing responsibility because that maybe more than anything is what's going to influence you and encourage you to embrace your responsibility. Remember, with great freedom and great love comes great responsibility. So embrace that responsibility. Surround yourself with people who also embrace responsibility. And if you do those two things, you're going to be pretty okay at this adult thing. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for the opportunity that is in front of us, God, to embrace and to face this stage of life. God, all of the good that comes with it and the responsibility and the challenges that come with it, God. I pray that you would infuse us with the courage that we need to face and to embrace our responsibilities, God, and that we would trust that as we do that, you are going to come alongside of us to get us through it and to strengthen us in the meantime to prepare us for all of the good things and all of the responsibilities that lie ahead. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks so much, everybody. Thanks so much for that message, Paul. Such a poignant one. You know, when he was talking about facing and embracing responsibility, being like a muscle, I couldn't help but think of our faith kind of in the same manner. You know, as we invest in growing in our faith, as we embrace the struggles and sometimes the doubt and remain committed to being consistent in our pursuit of Jesus, we're growing those spiritual muscles. And y'all, I want you to be spiritually built. You know, the stronger and more confident in our faith that we become, the more capable we are of handling the next thing that comes our way, no matter how difficult. So let's get after it. And hey, if you're not sure where to begin growing in your faith, let me know. Text in, drop a comment in that prayer section. I'd love to be able to chat with you and help you get started or restarted in your faith. You don't have to do this alone. Let's get better together. Well, thanks so much for being here today. Before you go, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And I'll see all of you right back here next week.